We get a lot of questions from personal users that are worried that they think they've been hacked. So we wanted to put a video together just to go through some of the basics that you you should do if you feel that you've been hacked. And we get too many of these emails, so we can't address people on a one by one basis anymore, unfortunately. Um, but we generally wanted to build up some content for people to, to, to help folk that are in, um, uh, uh, find themselves in a situation where they think they may have been hacked personally. So first and foremost, have you actually been hacked? So quite a lot of the times when we have got involved in cases, it's just technical gremlins which are causing these problems. Internet being slow or internet shutting down at a certain time or devices making weird noise or something like that. So if you, it's one of these gremlin type reasons that you think you've been hacked, get someone, doesn't have to be a security expert or even a technology expert, even someone that's good with home entertainment, go through what you think is the reason that you've been hacked and just get them to give you a second opinion. Is that just technical gremlins? I've got a TV in my house. Um, every now and again, it turns on at 12 o'clock at night. Um, my wife and my kids think that it's um, a ghost um, that's haunting us. Um, it's actually just going to be like a wake on land thing that's kind of a bit spurious. So I haven't actually worked it out yet. I know uh, that it's not a ghost, um, but to anyone that doesn't really know technology, it can seem um, a little bit ghostly. So definitely get a second opinion. So um, the next thing is try and work out the profile or be comfortable or aware, sorry, of the profile of the type of person that may hack you. So it's less likely to be nefarious teams or nation states. So nefarious teams, again, it's not impossible that they may want to hack people, but nefarious teams are after ransom money of some way, shape or form. And they're more likely to go after businesses um, because of that, because it's easier to extort money out of businesses. And nation states, if you are a public figure or you run a big enterprise or something like this, or you're an engineer that protects a certain intellectual property that a nation state might be after, then yes, you could be more of a contender. But usually any of the cases that we have gone through, it's a disgruntled ex-lover or person in and around, neighbor, something like that, in and around, slightly connected um, to you as an individual. Now, that doesn't make it any less scary, um, granted, but sometimes it's, it's, it's interesting just to understand the profile um, of the person uh, that, that you think may, may have been hacking. If you feel that you've been hacked, um, you need to build a segregated network. There is a bit of cost with this. I would suggest getting in a new line, but at least a new IP address and a new factory reset to your existing router or ideally a brand new router and a separate line. And th the second you get that router, you rename that password yourself um, and ensure that that router and that line has no external ports out outbound um, that's showing to the raw internet. You can use RoboShadow's vScanner, uh, external scanner, to be able to check this. We also have an app in the Play Store um, to be able to help you with this as well. Um, and keep on top of that because some devices will open up ports to the outside world like um, games consoles and things like that. Uh, media sharing uh, devices and things like that. So uh, you need to switch that functionality off in your router. Um, most routers uh, in the UK will come with that enabled so they don't have to deal with the um, support um, uh, cases that come from that. So, But make sure that you have no ports um, displaying to the outside world and you can use RoboShadow Tech uh, for that. Feel free to get in touch um, if you don't know how. Um, and try and disable that functionality on your router that actually does that um, and it's usually just a switch within the router and that's quite easy to do. So once you've got your new network or your new device and your new IP address, um, what you want to do um, is only have devices, don't connect any device on that network that's not a brand new clean factory reset operating system rebuild of a Mac or a Windows laptop or something like that and only install software the bare minimum that you need, maybe office and the device, nothing else if you can get away with it because you need to be a bit sort of MI5, MI6 about this and be as clean as possible. Same for the phone. The phone that goes over, get it completely factory reset. If you're really paranoid, you can change your number, you can change your SIM card and things like that. If you're really worried that there's a genuine case there, um, then, but make sure that that phone on that new network is completely clean and only install the bare minimum apps and try and 
stave off social media and things like that. And um, because what you want to do is making sure that you have got them out completely. It's almost impossible, which I'll go into in a second, to try and catch them in the act um, at, at a personal level. So what you want to be able to do is just build a network that's completely segregated um, and, and completely clean and every device on that is completely clean. Go with the minimum amount of devices and shut everything else off on the old network um, uh, if you can. When you want to move devices from the old network to the new network, uh, before you move the anything over and above the bare essentials, I would ensure um, that you um, be comfortable that the thing that you were seeing that makes you feel that you've been hacked in the first place, uh, whatever technical gremlin or thing um, that it is that's leading you to believe that you've been hacked, make sure that that's not there, obviously. Then slowly move devices on to your new clean network one by one. Now, each of those devices have to be factory reset and complete firmware update. And if you have an account for like a camera that's got a Google account connected to it or something like that, rename that, reset that password or better yet, completely change that account to move that over. You're going for complete cleanliness effectively, almost greenfield technological setup, less being more. Um, and if you can, one of the best piece of advice that we would like to give people is segregate the network so that no device can talk to other devices. So there's a couple of nuances with this. Sometimes you want devices to talk to other devices, but do you really need them, especially if you feel that you've been hacked? But you, some routers, home routers can do this out of the box. There's a setting in them. Anyone that half knows technology can do this for you. Uh, you may have to buy an additional switch device that does, uh, does this, but it basically means that every single device connects to the internet, the switch, and your device, but can't see each other on the network. What this stops is, is anyone does find a way back in is they're moving laterally across your network. So what a hacker will do, they'll get in via a device, but assume that device or that app will be patched how they got in in the near future. They will then try and find, scan the network and find a vulnerable device that they can get onto that they can effectively um, hide in um, over time that's less likely to be patched, like an old printer or, or something like that. So if you are really worried, get some network segregation done. You may need to get someone to help you do that. It's slightly more advanced, but it's a, a lot better way um, of being able to protect your network. If you genuinely feel that someone has hacked you and you've got good reason to believe that, then the way, and you've got a completely segregated network and you feel still feel the problem exists, what you need to do is hire someone, and you could probably use People Per Hour or Fiverr Upwork for this, someone that just got a cyber security background, and it doesn't have to be thousands of pounds a day, it can be hundreds of dollars and not thousands of dollars or pounds, is you want to build a honeypot for your network, so it's a device that's designed to be vulnerable to catch someone to confirm that someone's hacking, whether or not that's um, like a password enumeration or a port scan or a network scan of something um, of that nature. And also someone that knows cybersecurity will put enhanced logging on all of your devices so and log that out. So what they will be looking for is that someone that hacks you um, will try and um, do it as secretive possible, uh, secretively as possible, but it's really hard um, for them um, to completely hide what they're doing. So you'd build some kind of honey, honey pot within your network. This is um, a vulnerable device on purpose um, that allows um, people to, to, to hack it so that you know you've definitely got someone in your network trying to hack things, um, but then logging out all of your actual devices as well. So I think that's pretty much um, it that we would usually cover. As I say, uh, we can't um, we can't get to every single user's uh, request because we just get too many uh, requests now. But we definitely feel an emotional connection to the users that we know that feel that they've genuinely been hacked. Um, and hopefully, this video uh, will help give you an understanding of what to do in those situations. Uh, please um, like and subscribe. But also, if you have questions, please put them in the comments because some of your questions may help other users. Um, if we answer your questions it may help other users uh, work out a path for themselves so thank you ever so much for watching